Hi again. Uh, so welcome to the first video of uh, non-introductory material for um, this session on evolutionary milestones as part of evolution and paleobiology. And in this first video, we're going to provide just a tiny bit of groundwork for what comes in the subsequent videos. Uh, we'll be looking at what the Earth was like before life existed, but also because the first parts of this um, video session and the, the video following this one focus on the origins of life, an event called abiogenesis, we're also looking at what actually makes life. I want you all to know that it was really, really difficult for me not to make a joke about a Hadaway song that was very famous in 1992, no doubt many years before you were born, but which I remember with fondness. Um, but yes, that's an aside. So moving quickly onwards, when it comes to defining a life, this is actually trickier than you may think. In order to understand the appearance of life, obviously we have to be able to define what life is. I've got a definition for you from Stearns and Hookstra in 2000, who said that a living thing should have a metabolism, that is, a coordinated system of chemical reactions contributing to its maintenance and a system that imports energy to maintain order. And it should also have hereditary replication, a system of copying in which the new structure resembles the old. So that is one definition, but as I mentioned, it's actually quite hard to uh, describe what uh, life really is. Almost all definitions though have in common um, that something that is alive is able to maintain itself. That's the metabolism that I spoke of. It's able to replicate um, so it can make copies of itself. But quite importantly, it does so imperfectly. So the imperfections in replication are often in the form of mutations. And these are the bread and butter by which uh, variety is built up and therefore can be selected upon. I've put a quick quiz below this video, which you can have a go at when you're done watching, and you can have a go at figuring out, based on those three things, whether the uh, objects and or organisms that I've placed in the quiz are living or not. And that will provide some feedback as you give your answers. One thing I want you to take away from today's lecture is that even the simplest life forms on Earth are really very complex indeed. And actually, if you think about this, that kind of makes sense, right? No matter what organism you're looking at, everything from uh, organisms that have traditionally been considered very simple, such as bacteria, through to the more complex organisms, complex, such as plants and animals, are the result of at least 3,800 million years of evolution. So it makes a lot of sense that what we see alive today will be complex no matter what. A really good example of this is how DNA, um, that's the informational molecule found in the vast majority of living organisms, in all living organisms, in fact. Uh, the reason I keep on stopping to think about this is because, as you'll see in a minute, we can debate about whether viruses are alive or not. But for everything that's not a virus, uh, DNA is conver converted into proteins using a process called protein synthesis. These are shown on this slide here. And you can see that there are multiple steps that go from DNA through multiple different forms of molecule to, and then multiple steps, to actual proteins, which are the bread and butter of what cells do themselves. It has many complex steps, which must have evolved, we believe, in a piecemeal fashion. It makes no sense uh, to believe anything otherwise. At life's origins, we strongly expect that everything was much simpler. This, coupled with a lack of chemical or fossil evidence from early life, means that we have to deal with a lot of uncertainty when studying the origins of life. And I'm sure that will come across in many of the parts of the lecture today when I say that we are still debating it. This isn't to say that we haven't made significant strides in the last um, 100 years of science into understanding the origins and early evolution of life. It's just that our error bars remain quite big. 
You may want to think about, before our Zoom session, why it is we don't have evidence for life's origins in the rock record. Have a think and we can discuss it later. So if we're looking at the deep history of life on Earth, this is the time scale that we're operating on. Uh, so the Earth has its origins some 4,560 million years ago. That's a long time. Um, this is a time scale up to the present day. The present day is marked by a silhouette of a person here, a human being. And actually, all of Homo sapiens history, every uh, everyone that's ever lived, every king and every emperor and every pauper and everyone in between has all lived within about one one hundred thousandth of this far right hand pixel on this image that you're seeing. So that puts um, some perspective on this time scale. The dinosaurs that were around for a significant length of time uh, in the Mesozoic are shown here and I've also put the trilobites on here to further add some um, some kind of context for how vast this timeline really is. So the Earth began with an accretionary phase. That was what was happening about 4,560 million years ago. Um, we think that high temperatures during this accretionary phase preclude, precluded liquid water um, being present on Earth. We may well have had steam and incinerated organic compounds, but we wouldn't have had widespread oceans. This accretionary phase, phase, however, was followed by cooling in a period where water and probably simple organic compounds could accumulate on Earth. And actually, we have some evidence that this was the case. So uh, as you can see, there's a, uh, an image here of a zircon. This is a mineral. And oxygen isotopes have been used to um, indicate the presence of liquid water uh, when these 4.4 billion year old detrital zircons were formed. So that's about 100 to 200 million years after the accretion of the Earth. On this basis, we uh, believe as a best guess that between 4.4 to 4.0 billion years ago, extensive liquid water oceans existed for long periods in Earth history. These were cool enough to allow the survival of organic compounds, although there is fairly significant debate about exactly what temperature these early oceans were. Those uh, that could be anywhere between um, fairly welcoming temperatures in the 20s and 30s Celsius up to 70 or 80 degrees Celsius because the Earth was releasing a lot more heat early in its history. Oh, we don't have an answer for that yet, I'm afraid. But moon cratering suggests that this period of time from 4.4 to 4 billion years ago was relatively impact free. There weren't many meteorites or asteroids hitting. And it is in this quiescent or quiet interval that the key steps for the origin of life probably occurred. But note, that is me stating an opinion and actually finding uh, incontrovertible proof of when the origins of life may have occurred um, is really very, very difficult. So it's a matter of very active debate. At 3.9 billion years ago, there was an event called the Late Heavy Bombardment. This is uh, an event which we know um, based on an impact, uh, sorry, a spike in impact rates. So here you can see a graph showing the impact rate relative to today um, based on uh, studying cratering on the moon. And you can see that at around 3.9 billion years ago, there was uh, an impact uh, spike. This is currently thought to have lasted between 20 and 200 million years in duration. Most recent estimates fall around the lower limit. And indeed, I've actually put a, um, an article uh, at the very bottom of this slide that was released in 2018 questioning its very existence at all. Uh, it pre was previously thought that this could have killed all life and sterilized the Earth. So abiogenesis, the origins of life, would have happened after this late heavy bombardment. Current thinking, based on the um, Abramov reference that I've placed on this slide, um, suggests that life need not post-date the late heavy bombardment because computer models suggest that there is no 
plausible situation in which the habitable bits of the Earth were ever fully sterilized. So all life probably did not die out. So when it comes to the origins of life, I think these are likely to be before this late heavy bombardment and evolution continued from that point through to today. We'll find out more about how, how abiogenesis may have actually happened and the mechanisms by which we believe this happened in the next video. So I'll see you there.